Hello, everybody. My name is Allison Zock, and I coordinate the Nebraska Invasive Species Program at the University of Nebraska. And we're going to talk about invasive species today. Have you guys ever heard of invasive species before? A lot of no. Good. Um, so these are bad guys. Unfortunately, I, I work with a lot of bad guys, um, not, not on their own uh, fault, largely because of us. Um, this is the craft we're going to do together. So um, I understand you have scissors. So just hold those for now. We're going to cover a couple things and then we'll do this together. And then these are the items that we'll give you to give home to take home with you. The one on the left is going to be a similar activity to what we're doing together. And then the right is just an activity page for you to do. So invasive species, these are non-native species. Um, so these are basically aliens in an ecosystem. So um, maybe you've seen a weed or a plant in your backyard that's kind of taking over, or maybe you've gone to a lake and you've seen some plants in that lake. Um, these are examples of, of invasive species. And so invasive species in their native range are uh, controlled by diseases and other factors. But when we get them into ecosystems where they're not native, they can sometimes outcompete our native species. So we're gonna talk about a few different invasive species examples. So some characteristics that make invasive species able to outcompete our native species would be fast growth. And so you'll see this picture on the right these are two different fish species and you'll see one's a lot bigger than the other, right? So some of our invasive species grow very quickly and that allows them to get away from predators. And so without predators, they're, they're able to grow quickly and now compete our native species. Um, so in their native range, like I mentioned, there might be things like other fish or other animals that eat these invasive species, but when they get into a non-native range, um, sometimes they lack those predators. And so that's why we have a really hard time controlling them. And then they have very rapid reproduction. So you see a lot of eggs here. Um, Asian carp, for example, can have 200,000 eggs. And so that's many more than our native fish. And so by having lots of babies, invasive species can outcompete our native species. So this is purple loosestrife, an invasive plant. Has anybody ever heard of purple loosestrife? Or seen a plant that might look like this? That's a good... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we this is purple loosestrife, and we have this in our wetlands and by our rivers. And so um, if you ever go to a, a wetland or by a pond and you see a, a purple plant, it could be this. Um, purple loosestrife we brought over from Asia because it's really pretty and it's really hard to kill. But the problem with that is that um, when it gets in a wetland, it takes over everything. And can anybody think of why looking at this picture, that would be a problem just having one plant dominate the whole area? So we have a lot of different animals and, and plants that need diversity, okay? So if you think of the different um, geese or ducks or turtles um, or other animals that live in our rivers and our wetlands, they, they need different food sources, right? So if we have all of one plant, those animals can't persist. So what we did is we looked over in Asia to find out what controls this there. And we found a little weevil, which is pictured down here. It's a little bitty bug. And what we actually can do is we grow this insect, then we release it in these wetlands and they'll kill all the purple loosestrife plants, but then they don't eat anything else. So all of those weevils will die. And that's a way that we use a biological control to control an invasive plant. And a biological control is using one living organism to control another. So an example would be a disease or a insect. So what you can do to prevent the spread of invasive plants is to stay on paths. So I'm sure a lot of you like to go walking, um, uh, walking with your dog maybe, uh, going on nature hikes, going hunting. Um, whenever you're doing that, please stay on any existing roads or paths. And the reason to do that is because if you don't, you might get parts of invasive plants or mud on your clothes or shoes. And if you take those somewhere else, that, can, that could spread invasive species. Also brush any pets that you take with you. And in your backyards or wherever, make sure you plant native species when you can or non-native and pay attention to what's growing in your yard. Sometimes we have plants that just kind of go crazy. And so it's important to control those early to make sure they don't take over. So how many of you like to go boating or like to go swimming or like to go fishing or like to go and, and look at birds and other animals by our water bodies? Right, so our water bodies are great, right? We can do lots of what, lots of good things with them. The problem is we have many different invasive species that can take over those water bodies. And one is a silver carp. Has anybody ever seen a fish jump out of the water? Yeah, so 
Lots of them, yeah. Um, so this is a silver carp, and, and if you've ever been on a lake or a river that has these, um, these guys can jump out of the water up to 20 feet out of the water, so way, way far out of the water. The problem is they can weigh up to 60 pounds, and so if they hit you, um, they can really hurt you, and they do hurt people every year. Um, unfortunately, we do have these in our rivers in Nebraska. Um, if you ever catch one, feel free to eat it. They're delicious. Um, but the problem is that they're a fish that, like I talked about earlier, have lots of babies and grow really fast, really big. Um, and so in Asia, where they're native, they have lots of animals that kill them and, and keep them in check. But we don't have that here in Nebraska. So this is a fish we spend a lot of time um, researching because there is no silver bullet, unfortunately. Um, zebra mussels. Has anybody ever heard of a zebra or quagga mussel? What? What can somebody tell us about a zebra or quagga mussel? What do you know about them? Found on boats. Very good, yes. So zebra and quagga mussels get around by us on our boats or in our fishing buckets um, or anything that gets in a water body. When these guys reproduce in the summertime, their babies are invisible and they're floating in the water. So if you ever put a boat on a lake or a river that has these guys, you could be taking up their, their larva and then spreading it to another water body. Um, the adults shown here are about the size of your thumbnail. So they're actually really little. Um, but the problem with them is each of these guys filter feeds a liter of water a day. And so that's a ton of plankton that they eat out of the water column. And so that can starve um, juvenile fish or other aquatic species. So prevention is really key. And, and yes, we're unfortunately the ones uh, they can spread them. And so I'll talk to you about how to prevent that. And then finally, curly leaf pondweed. Do, you, do any of you guys like to go canoeing or kayaking or, yeah, or pat, stand up paddle boarding? Um, if you look at this lake on the right, that would be pretty tough, wouldn't it? Um, this is curly leaf pondweed. And so this is an example of an aquatic invasive plant. And we have several different plant species, but what these do is they just create a mat across the whole lake. And that makes it very hard to go boating or do anything. Um, so it's all about prevention. So here's what you can do. We want you to clean, drain and dry your boat um, and anything else that gets wet in a water body before you go to another water body. And so look at that, that trailer, that boat, um, take off any mud or plant parts or animals and, and throw them away. If you have a boat that has a live well, if you go fishing and you put them in a live well on a boat, um, they'll have a drain plug that you can pull to make sure all that water is, is out of the boat. And then finally dry that boat for at least five days, if not two weeks. Um, these guys need moisture to live. So it's really important to just dry and clean everything to prevent their spread. And then if any of you go um, fishing with, with minnows, little fish, never release those that you don't use into the water body because those could be Asian carp or other invasive fish. And then finally, if you have a pet that you no longer want or can't take care of, um, never release it into the wild. That could introduce an invasive species into a water body. Or if you have a pet like a snake, we never want you to release that because um, that could, again, be really detrimental to that animal. Um, so you can always call the, your Humane Society um, for, for information on how to, how to um, get rid of that pet. So we're gonna watch a video and then do our craft together. So this is the spotted lanternfly, and we don't have this in Nebraska yet. Um, it's in Ohio, but we're really concerned about it. So let's let's hear about it. Okay, so we're gonna make a spotted lanternfly. If you wanna go ahead and turn the lights back on um, so you can talk to others about it. And so what we're gonna do is you all have this sheet, I, I think, and you all have a pair of scissors, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is cut out um, along the dotted lines I've shown here, right? So we're gonna make a square out of this. And so you have these little corners. We want you to cut down all the cor off the, the perimeter. Um, so you make a perfect square. So the next step is we're gonna take this paper facing out and you're gonna fold it in half. So you're gonna make a, a triangle out of it. You can go either way, either side, but we're making a triangle of it, um, just like shown here. So just fold across. Does it matter if the pictures are on the outside or inside? Outside's best, yep, picture on the outside. Ready to move on? Okay, okay. Next, next step. Great, we're gonna do the exact same thing you just did, but on the other side. So you just do another triangle um, the opposite way of what you just did. 
Oh. So you have to unfold it, and then, yep. and yep. then you not you're not folding it again. So you have to open it back up. First. Yep, open it back up, and then fold That's it the cool. opposite way. So yeah, fold it the other opposite corner to corner. Yep. Pictures on the outside. Of you. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so everybody, go ahead and open your your page back up. So you're gonna have those folds that we just did. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it in half. Okay, so you open it all the way back up and then you just fold the whole thing in half. So you know, look at her example picture up here. Notice the yellows on bottom. I would line it up like her picture here. Pictures on the outside, yeah. We're ready for the next step. Great, okay. This one's a little tricky. So let me walk you through this, okay? So you're gonna open it all back up, right? So we we made a fold here and we made a fold here. What I want you to do is put is tuck in these two sides and we're gonna be making a triangle. So it's kind of tricky, but um, sometimes if you put this on your desk, it might help. And so what we're doing is, is we're making it so that we, have, we make a, a triangle. So I find it easy to, to go ahead and, and redo these, this fold we did up top, Just redo that, make sure it's, it's a good fold. And then do the same thing on your bottom triangle. Make sure you, you recrimp it. We'll go through it again here in just a little bit. Yep. I, then, at the start, I didn't have my screen. I had your PowerPoint up. So I just, oh, okay. I just switched the screen. So now your screen's bigger. So okay. the, first, the first part was a little hard to see. It gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So this one, what we're doing is you have your, your page like this. So what we're doing yellow is up. So we're trying to make this and this. We're we're trying to fold in these sides is what you're gonna do. And so what what I find is easy is to go ahead and, and refold this to make sure that you have a good crimp on it. And then and then go to the bottom, make sure you have a good fold on that triangle. And then that's gonna make it easier for you to push in these sides so that you can actually fold it in to make the triangle. So it's a little tricky, but this is what you're trying to make, is a, is a triangle. You're trying to push in these two sides. Like what you were just doing, honestly. So that you make that triangle. You're pushing it, you're pushing it. So like, this is what she's talking about. Yep, that's great. Okay, it looks like we are ready to move on. Okay, so this next one, what we're gonna do is you have this, this triangle right here, right? So what you're gonna do is you have a line that goes straight down. If you look closely, it's hard to read. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold in this, this wing um, straight up. So if you look at the, the picture here, you're gonna take this wing that's like this and you're gonna fold it straight up so that it covers half of the yellow bug, okay? So we have this side right here and you're gonna fold it so that it goes halfway over the body. So take this corner and fold it to where you have it halfway over the bug's body, like that. Take this corner and just straight up. The yellow has to be... So if you hold it like this with your bug facing that way, and then yeah, take the bug this corner. You take the corner here and then you fold it over. So if you guys already did this one, go ahead and do it to the other side. Do the exact same thing to this other side. So you're gonna take this other corner, whichever corner you didn't do, and you just fold it straight up. And so then you're covering that yellow bug totally. When you're done, you shouldn't see that yellow bug at all. We are ready. Okay. Okay. So hold so your next, next people here. Okay. So this next step here, you have, okay. So we just folded these over, right? And so now you have this, 
I want you to unfold what we just folded, right? So I want you to open it up back up to be just like this. Just like the triangle, so back yep. to the triangles. Okay, mm -hmm. and then what we're gonna do, if you look, if you look closely right underneath the bottom of the of the yellow bug is a line. And I, I put a dotted line here for you to see. I want you to fold that back. So I want you to fold towards the back. And so you're just gonna make the bottom of that flat so that the bottom um, is just your bug. So it should look like that. So you're just folding this bottom triangle up, just like that. Does that make sense? So right here, if you're not sure, look at high. So bug, bug yellow's on top and you're just holding there's a line it says letter e on it oh i think I know. yep and you just fold it behind yep so now you should end up with it should look like that when you're done is everybody good on that part getting there now make sure you're hold, hold, hold yours with the long part on top it's like yeah. Okay. Got that. Yep. Great. I don't really get okay. So now we're going to fold those wings back, right? So we had already had um, those, those wings folded. Um, so you're just going to fold those red wings back up. Okay. So we'd already done this step, right? Where you had your, your red wing up. So you're going to fold those again. Can you show that one more time? So that you have this, right? We can do it this way too. Um, we'll do it like this. So everybody put your thing like this. Small, short, short side up. Yep. And then you're gonna take your wing and again, bring it, bring the corner up so that it covers half the bug, just like we did before. So, no, like this. And then the, so you're taking this corner and you bring it straight up. Okay. And then you bring the other corner straight up, just like we did before. And so that's what it's going to look like, just like we did before. Yes, you have to you have to kind of work with the paper. I know some of you are saying it won't let you. I'll come around and show you how to make it work. You just have to. You just it might not line up. Now some of ours aren't lining up for a big sure. Because of sure. Some that's of fine. Doesn't have to be beautiful. They're taking this this far this corner and the other corner. You just bring it straight up, so you're covering that bug up again, like we did before. And then you're done. Flip it over, and that's your bug. It's your spotted lantern fly. Some of you are figuring out that if you have a little bit of a space, that's because of some of the folding from before that we yep. might not have done perfectly. It's okay. And that's just fine. Just fine. All right. I think a lot, most of us got that down. Great. And that's it. So you just flip it back over and there's your spotted lantern play. Thank you guys. I know it's not the easiest thing, but you did great. Do you just want us to have those off to the side for now? Yep, yep we're good. So we're just going to yep. set those aside. Okay. So, so we're going to watch a short video on how to prevent the spread of invasive species. And then I'd be happy to take any questions um, you have. So let's watch this quick video. You wouldn't track dirt through your grandmother's kitchen. Just like at Nana's, it's important to wipe your boots after recreation. Otherwise, you could be spreading harmful invasive species without knowing it. Here are a few quick and easy ways you can help. Start the day with clean gear. Remember to stay on trails. And when you're done for the day, Remove mud, seeds, and materials from your clothing, gear, vehicles, and animals. Don't move firewood. Buy it where you burn it. Avoid transporting invasive species with firewood. 
If gardening is your thing, look for plants native to your area at the nursery. Clean your tools between uses. Put any clippings or waste that could contain invasive species in the trash, not a compost pile. Mother Nature will thank you for it. And take the Play Clean Go pledge today. Okay. Well, here's my website, anyinvasives.com. And if you enjoyed that, that um, origami and you want to do it with your friends or your family, you can download it there with the instructions. Um, also, you can learn more about other invasive species that we didn't talk about today. And you can even report any species you find there. Um, so please check out my website, anyinvasives.com. And you will be taking these home. And those can also be downloaded on my website if you want to do more of those in the future. So with that, I can take any invasive species questions you have or anything you want to talk about. I appreciate you guys' attention today. Does anybody know of any invasive species or have you heard of any? Or if you have any other any other questions, Maddie? How do you know if it's an invasive species? How do I know if it is an invasive species? Yep. Um, so if something is is taking over or out competing something else, so have you ever had something in your yard that, that grows really fast and, and kind of spreads. Um, that would be an example of, of a weed. Um, and so that can be an example of how invasive species just kind of take over. And so they're gonna take over that habitat for our native species and, and just outcompete them. So something that's pretty aggressive is a good way of knowing if, if it might be invasive. Great question. Brindley? Is a dandelion an invasive species? Good question. Good question. So. Um, an invasive species is something that impacts the environment. And um, if you didn't know dandelions, you can actually eat them. So dandelions to some people are good. Um, they can be good for pollinators in the early springtime. So right now we have a lot of trees blooming. So the pollinators don't really need dandelions. Feel free to spray them. But early in the spring, dandelions are actually important for our bees and our other pollinators. But of course, um, they can take over your yard. So... <clears throat> So very good question. Um, dandelions can definitely be weeds. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so Not necessarily to, some people, to some people, they probably would say that they are. Absolutely. I would say. Yeah, that was Absolutely. a good question. Any other questions? What are, I have a question now. So yeah. what are some, what are some well-known invasive species like insects, like uh, that you that we might know or might see around our area. Yeah, so the emerald ash borer, um, which I'm going to send this home with you guys to do, and it's another folding. I think it might be easier than what we did. The emerald ash borer is a little bitty insect. He's the size of your pinky fingernail, and and right now this is springtime, and so those adults are emerging, and and the female emerald ash borer will start laying eggs on ash trees. So if you have any trees in your yard, um, it's important to know if you do have an ash tree. Um, and if you live somewhere in the state that has emerald ash borer, we have emerald ash borer in the eastern part of the state right now, as far as Kearney. But the problem with these emerald ash borers is the larva will hatch and then it'll actually eat at the inside of the tree. And over time that can kill the ash tree. But what we, we do have um, a chemical you can inject your ash tree with but we don't want you treating your tree until you have emerald ash borer. So emerald ash borer is a really important insect that um, you may be concerned about if you have an ash tree in your yard. So do you, and some of you might not ride the buses, but when the buses go by the high school through that little alley, like that short yeah. part, there's a bunch of ash trees there. Yeah. Have you ever noticed there's some missing spots now? Yeah. There's like trees where there used to be trees there. Well, they've had to cut some trees down because of that. Some of them have really, they've died really quickly because of what Allison mentioned, Maddie. I know you said there can be um, like bad species like inside the trees, but what about just the tree itself? Would that be? Oh, like an invasive tree. An invasive tree. Um, so one thing they talked about was tree of heaven. And so you can, you can Google that or come to my website, tree of heaven. Um, it's, it's a really invasive tree and it actually can grow through concrete. It's kind of amazing. Um, so it's called tree of heaven, but it's really a nasty tree. Um, and if you break the stem, it actually smells like peanut butter. It's really weird. So tree of heaven is a very invasive tree. Um, we have a lot of it along um, railroad tracks or even in urban areas. Like I said, it'll grow through concrete. So tree of heaven is a very invasive tree. Um, so great question. Have you seen any of that? Is that a big, pretty big problem in our side of the state? Yeah. Remind me where you are. 
we're in Syracuse, so just straight south of Omaha. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So um, I'd be happy if you want to shoot me an email um, to send you a picture. But um, if you ever see trees growing, you know, like at a Starbucks or a gas station, um, like out of concrete or, or just um, they really look like sumac. So if you know what sumac looks like when these trees are young, they look exactly like sumac um, and they get very large. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very common in very kind of urban or disturbed areas. They, they really take advantage of that. Any other questions? Garrett? I think I've seen one. This is a, I think I've seen one at my grade and because they moved through a car. Through, through a car? Yeah, through a car. Wow. Yeah, possibly. Brinley? <laughs> Um, there are like these worms that are on the tree side of uh, my house, and like they're just like a thing or something, and they're attached to like the tiny mm -hmm. Are you thinking of like bag bagworms? Is that? Yeah. Uh, I wonder if maybe you could yeah. be bagworms possibly. Yeah. Isaac? It's like if one of those trees could one of those trees like grow into the school. <laughs> um, it will not grow into your school, but it could grow right at where your building and the concrete mat match. That's where it would be growing. Okay. So yeah, the seeds get in there. It would grow outside, so it's not going to hurt your school. Don't worry. Any other questions? Well, thank you guys. Uh, really yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time out. What should we tell Alex? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too.